Greetings fellow gamers, I'm the Soulsborne Seeker and today I'll be reviewing Scoutfold Usurper, a retro-action metroidvania souls-like title developed by Steve Gall and initially published by Pagware for PC back in 2018, before making the jump to consoles on June of 2023, effectively becoming available also for PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, as well as the Xbox Series X and Series S. Usurper is the second game in the Scoutfold series, a pentalogy of games taking place near the end of the 1800s in a fictional version of Earth that is plagued by an oppressive fog which unleashed a legion of cosmic horrors on humanity, with each title chronicling the attempts of different characters to stave off the abominations and put an end to the deadly mist once and for all. What's interesting here is that every game in the series is developed in a diverse range of genres, ranging from classic Souls-likes and Metroidvanias all the way to top-down shooters and turn-based role-playing games, thus offering a unique experience to anyone wishing to play the IP to completion. Before we dive into the nitty-gritty of the review, I do wish to clarify the following. Usurper is a sequel to the first game in the series, titled Scoutfold Shrouded Insanity, and thus features story connections to that initial title. While the developer does mention that each game can be played individually without the need for prior knowledge of the story and lore, I must admit that having already played the first title definitely helped with my investment in the plot of the second game, since I was already familiar with certain characters and their actions firsthand. What transpired during the first game is revealed through character dialogue, so Usurper doesn't keep you in the shadows, and the events of Shrouded Insanity don't play a definitive role on what happens in Usurper, but I have to say that prior engagement with the prequel definitely added to my experience of the sequel. The first game is actually free to play on Steam under the title Shrouded Insanity Freebirth if you wish to try it out, which I do recommend, though I must clarify that it's not a Metroidvania but a clear Souls-like. And with that out of the way, let's get to the thick of it. The events of Scoutfold Usurper transpired during 1898, a full year after the story of the first game. You take on the role of Saragat, one of the four knight protectors of the Angelic Kingdom of Britannia, who lost his life in an attempt to fight back against the terrors of the Citadel, a huge cosmic construct that looms above London, threatening to consume its inhabitants. Lucky for him, his corpse is discovered by Waltham, an enigmatic figure that was weakened by a fierce fight against the Navigator, a mythic creature said to pilot the floating fortress. In an effort to save his own life, Waltham enters Saragat's corpse and brings him back to the world of the living, forcing the two of them in a symbiotic relationship to ensure their mutual survival. With their uneasy alliance in effect, Saragat and Waltham embark on a treacherous journey to face the Navigator and bring an end to the horror of the Citadel, each for their own reasons. Overall, the lore of the Scoutfold series is incredible, drawing clear inspirations from the works of H.P. Lovecraft to the point where there is a character dedicated to the author in the game itself. Every aspect of the setting and story is drenched in cosmic elements, borrowing quite liberally from the Cthulhu mythos while at the same time adding fresh components to weave a disturbing tale that's worth going through. That being said, I must say that the initial game did a much better job at building up tension and mystery than the second, with Usurper being a bit more straightforward and lacking the twists and nuances that made me love its world in the first place. Regardless, I still enjoyed learning more about the Scoutfold universe, even though some of the revelations were a bit simpler than I would have liked. In terms of its world, Usurper predominantly takes place within the floating citadel, with a minor section also allowing you to traverse a small part of London. Now, while that might sound limiting, fortunately the outlandish nature of the Citadel allows for the existence of a variety of different biomes, ranging from a human city to a large ancient tree, all the way to an imposing cathedral and sprawling catacombs, just to name a few. The setting does a pretty good job of giving off a disturbing vibe by filling its different areas with unhinged horrors and architecture that defies the laws of physics, but I have to admit that there were some aspects of it that I felt took away from its potential to be truly impressive. For starters, I found the color palette to be relatively bland, with most areas featuring dark shades which, in combination with frequently dim lighting, made certain parts of the setting come off as quite flavorless. Unfortunately, this also affected gameplay to a degree, since there were times where the choice of coloration made it quite difficult to understand whether parts of the biome were platforms I could step on or just background art, at times also deceiving me about their actual depth, leading to certain instances of confusion when it came to platforming. Since we're talking about setting, I do need to also mention that the map could have been a bit more helpful than it actually ended up being. While the Citadel can be very impressive to traverse, the map does a poor job of letting you know exactly where you are, instead providing a static image that notes down boss locations as well as save points, but not your exact position. Adding to that, its sections are not revealed to you as you traverse them, instead requiring you to find a map piece in each biome in order to unlock it visually, which I thought was an odd choice. 
I'll admit that the world was relatively small and the map very visually detailed, something which almost always allowed me to know the area I was in as well as where I needed to go, but I would have preferred a more traditional metroidvania approach to this. Moving on to gameplay, Usurper plays it safe with its metroidvania and souls-like nature, focusing on combat and exploration with some minor platforming thrown into the mix. Combat-wise, on a basic level, the game features a truly immense collection of weapons that you can discover and utilize, allowing you to have four of them in quick slot at any given moment in order to switch between them at will. Now, while such a huge arsenal is an impressive feat, most weapons pretty much function in similar fashion, with minor differences depending on their nature. The main issue here is that there is no combo system involved, with every armament effectively having one attack that you can spam at the cost of the game's equivalent to stamina, and while there are some differences between the diverse types of weapons when it comes to said attack, once I found a single weapon that worked for me I never found the need to switch it up since the others didn't really offer that much of battle variety aside from alterations in range. Apart from your main weapons, there's also a spell system involved where you can purchase arcane abilities at the cost of Vitae, the game's currency but in all honesty I never really saw the need to use them since spamming my basic attack was always more practical to emerge victorious. Additionally, you are able to summon pets that fight alongside you, which you first need to discover by searching the citadel, and while their addition was a welcome one, they felt largely similar to one another in terms of battle approach and not that useful in the grand scheme of things. Speaking of combat, Usurper features a leveling system reminiscent of many other Souls-like games. As Saragat, you can rest at the various different thrones you can find spread out across the map, which function both as save points as well as level up opportunities. Leveling up requires you to gather Vitae by killing enemies and exploring the biomes, as well as Eth stones, which can only be gained by exploring and looting chests and are limited in number. Leveling up allows you to upgrade various different skills such as dexterity, strength and constitution, which have an immediate effect on your health and damage output, as well as your guard meter, which functions both as a stamina bar as well as a protective shield, and is necessary for you to be able to perform attacks as well as dodge actions, but also to keep yourself from getting badly hurt since enemy hits first burn through your guard before going to your actual hit points. I'll admit that the guard system was a bit jarring at first, but I got used to it quite fast and thought it was an interesting approach to the standard stamina system featured in most Souls-like games. On the topic of dying, it should be noted that Usurper is not like other Souls-likes that allow you to travel back to your corpse and reclaim things you lost, instead taking away from you a percentage of your vitae for good, a decision that didn't really bother me. Exploration-wise, the game is clearly inspired by the metroidvania genre, which is always a plus. The map is completely open and features areas that you will not be able to reach until you obtain the proper ability first, which you do by following the story and defeating the bosses on your path. By exploring and backtracking, you will be able to find new weapons to equip and pets to summon, as well as an abundance of Vita and Death Stones which you can use to level up your character, as well as purchase the aforementioned spells and also make offerings to one of three Eldritch Gods which, unfortunately, I never really understood the reason for. On the topic of bosses, Usurper was a very mixed bag. While the design of the big bads was for the most part impressive, the majority of the boss fights were a breeze to go through, featuring almost no hardship aside from two very specific villains I faced off against, one of which was the final boss. I would have definitely liked a bit more of a challenge from them, and I would have also liked a few secret bosses to find since, as far as I could understand, every boss I fought was story related and I had explored the whole map by the end of my playthrough. When it comes to game length, it took me about 7 hours to complete Scoutfold Usurper while having explored the map to completion and having lost several times to the final boss. Following completion, Usurper unlocks a new Game Plus option which allows you to replay the game with major handicaps in order to increase the challenge and also features a few different endings based on decisions you will make at the beginning and end of the game. For a price range of 10 to 15 bucks depending on the platform you will play, I'd say it cuts it very close when it comes to value for money. If you have already played some of the biggest titles of this year in the genre and are looking for a new metroidvania to play, you could give it a shot, though I'd recommend approaching it with sensible expectations gameplay wise. In conclusion, my type with Scoutfold Usurper was a mixed bag, though leaning to the positive. I enjoyed the game's atmosphere and cosmic horror sensibilities, I had fun with the exploration aspect and found the Citadel an intriguing place to investigate despite the color palette issues, and I loved the further insights that I got into the Scoutfold universe. On the other hand, the combat could have definitely used more work to be elevated from its basic roots, the bosses should have offered a bit more of a challenge, and the story could have been presented in a more compelling manner. As a big fan of the Scoutfold universe, I found my journey through the world of Usurper worthwhile, 
but the game might not exercise a strong pull for people with no investment in the series. My final verdict on Scoutfold Usurper is 6 out of 10. What did you think about Scoutfold Usurper? Have you played it yet? Do you agree with the points I mentioned or do you see things differently? Let me know in the comments below and please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Soulsborne Seeker out!